Well, now that I have the um, heater controls up and I'm back trying to sort out radio wires, um, again, you know, wires all got just totally torn loose here. So I'm going through one at a time with my voltmeter and checking the wires that are loose and um, checking them for voltage. Um, for example, the um, this yellow one ought to be 12 volt switch, so we'll turn on the ignition key. If we turn it to power, see it's got 12 volts. If I turn the key off, it goes away. I mean, it's reading 9 tenths, but it's 12.3 in accessory, so. Um, I've also tested the ground wire to make sure that the black one to make sure it's grounded. Because um, they cut a lot of things out of the cable. So, so black is black, yellow is, is switched power, um, the gray one is, um, I've also tested that one by, it goes over to the light switch and so as you dim the lights, um, that's the dimmer lead. It looks to me that they took the wires for the speakers and hooked them together so the it's like the front speaker wires are hooked to the rear speaker wires. Um, it may be that because there's amp, an amp in the back that they used the wires to get up to the front speakers and then they used the, old, I'll call them the old rear speaker wires that go to the back of the car to, as a traveler and put in another set of wires from the amp to the rear speakers. Cause, and then the only other thing is that this orange and brown and I need to check those because um, orange is should be the main battery feed. I taped these up because they were actually bare here in the dash and orange should be battery power. So let's disconnect this guy and make sure it doesn't hit ground anywhere. There we go, I get um, yeah, 12 and a half with the key off. So that's the main that's the main power to the radio. And then this other one that says illumination. If I turn on the lights, there I go, I get 11 and a half. Almost 12, that's good. I think there are two circuits. One is the basic lights for the buttons, illumination. And then there's a dimmer for the display because you've got a digital clock display. So now that I have those sorted out, I can go build my cables. The radio has, I've, I've been running wires from my meter to the back of the car. I got some extension cables and I've verified that this one says front, Ken, it goes back to the Kenwood amp and I have verified the connections from here to the back so I know what the pattern is. So this would be for the front speakers and this one would be for the rear speakers as well as extra connections to for when the radio is on uh, to trigger the amp. You, know, you, need, you need a power wire from up here to go to the back to say, hey, the radio's on, turn on the amplifier. Um, so there are a couple of those. And then, and then they, these also carry the speaker signals from the radio back to the amp. Um, rear speakers, front speakers. And then there's one more, that's this guy, uh, that actually came out of a Kenwood connector and went into um, RCA cables and if I understand the instructions properly from the equalizer and looking at the amp um, I think he had subs this is a connector for a second amplifier that doesn't have speakers connected to it currently and so you'd have had front speakers rear speakers and and subwoofers probably a, probably in a in a box back there so for the time being, I'm not going to worry about subwoofers. This one can just sit. I bought the connectors to match this. I was able to find, even though these amplifiers are 30 years old, I was able to find factory service manuals online in PDFs for purchase and check the wiring patterns. I bought the new connectors. I'll solder the wires in in the right pattern. And I have a radio that I'll build. I'll build the harness to pick up these wires, pick up the wires out of the Kenwood connector. I also bought a kit for an auxiliary input. And at some point I'll probably buy a nicer radio or I'll, up, I'll do some upgrading. 
But for the moment, I'd like to get thing, uh, things working a little bit. Now that I understand all the wires that I've got, I'll tape up the ones that need to be taped up temporarily. Uh, and I'll go back and build my cables. Okay, I'm back after um, <laughs> several hours of wiring. I'm working with this Delco Electronics uh, Avalanche radio, since it happened to be one I have on hand. The reason I use, I'm use i using this one, I might have said this before, but the nice thing about this radio is, in addition to cassette, or uh, in addition to a CD, um, it has auxiliary input. Uh, this radio has a set of cables coming out the back. It's a twisted pair with a... Um, with a foil shield out this far. Uh, then I spliced into a, a stereo a headphone style jack. When the original owner had this done, they cut all the original factory connectors out of the car. So I'm really trying to restore that if I can. Um, it's kind of going to be a mix, but t to me, I'd rather have the connectors available to be able to unplug things, take it out, and then be able to you know, switch a radio out by changing the connector on the radio rather than splicing all the car wires. Now, that's not as effective as you'd like it to be because all of these are the speaker wires and because of the rear amp, all the speakers are actually run through these Kenwood DIN plugs. So, in keeping with trying to keep make it unplug, and these are nice cables, I didn't want to cut them. Um, so, let me back up. So. This is a set of aftermarket cables that um, if I pulled this radio out, this plug would fit the original Delco. And so this will be a little bit of a hybrid where I'm not going to use the speakers right now. The day might come when I would, but I'll use the power uh, switch leads and illumination leads and ground in this connector, which are already spliced to the radio on the other side. Then. I took the speakers because of the rear amp, and the speakers are now, I built cables, I bought the connectors to match the Kenwoods. So I have a front connector that goes back to the Kenwood amp, and I've got a rear connector. And so then these guys, so there's front to front, there we go, get that together. So there's the rear and the rear, I'm sorry, the rear and the front, there's the rear and the rear plugs together like so. This one is the one that was um, goes back to the Yamaha amp. That amp is going to stay unplugged from power, so I'm just going to tuck these wires away. Okay, so those go back to the rear amp. The nice thing, other nice thing about this radio, in addition to um, in addition to the auxiliary input capability, is that it came out of a truck that had a an amplifier for the speakers. Instead of going direct to speakers, it has high level outputs that are meant to, meant to feed an amplifier. Sorry, can't get you don't know, see those. Um, it has it has um, the speaker outputs on this guy are meant to go to an intermediate amp. So hooking these up to the to the Kenwood amp should work well. Things I need to hook up. And one thing I was disappointed with is I bought a set of cables to try to redo the factory installation. Um, and the one connector came minus a wire. And this would be the, the wire for, uh, uh, one of the wires for illumination. The yellow one is the battery uh, constant. So I'm going to start splicing a couple of these things together. Um, I'll have to probably do the illumination wire with a hard with a hard splice according to my list. And it took a lot of work. These are all the connections on the radio. And I had to go track down wiring diagrams and verify that I had the right ones. If you have a radio that goes straight to the speakers, the wires may be one color, pin one. Um, if you just have speakers, the wire would be gray on pin one. And if you have an up level with an amp, like I do, then it's a dark green wire. So you have, it's, um, the plugs are all common, but the color codes are different. And uh, it, caused, it caused me a little extra fun sorting them all out. Because um, I don't have the truck to go look up the RPO numbers off from the VIN anymore. I went last night and tracked down all the wires. Just for reference, if you're trying to put a radio in one of these IROCs, this is what the color code that I pulled out of the service manual for my car. Uh, just be careful because different models uh, do have different codes. So I have a black ground wire there. And I have on the vehicle side, 
I have a black ground wire. We want to hook that guy up. I'm just going to use solderless splices. They actually work pretty darn well for this. Yellow wire that goes to the ignition switched power. 12 volt switched is yellow ignition switched. So it's red on this particular connector. And the dimmer is the gray wire, and they actually weren't using that one on the other radio. They cut off the other, the black and the yellow. Um, this connector would have been part of the original stack that, from the factory, but I guess I'm just going to have to clip that one so I can reuse it. To go 16. There we go. And I verified last night with a voltmeter. I came out here and checked to make sure that they really did what I thought they um, I mean, I've got the color code from the car. With all the things that happened in here, it's like, you got to make sure that you get a good... So I, I switched all the switches and made sure that the wires uh, reacted correctly. I always pretty much double crimp those guys and give them a tug and make sure they're, make sure they're good. Okay. So that takes care of those. The others are speaker wires that for now are, are not going to be used, but if I pull it would if I would pull the amps out and try to put the car back to stock, then I'd go back and reconnect these to the factory wires that are um, looped back upon themselves right here. Um, and and redo the factory connections. Now the last wires I've got. There's an orange and a brown, and the orange is battery continuous. That, that one's hot, and the other one is the one that says it's for illumination and goes to the light switch. So this guy is, is the hot lead, and it's on the secondary connector, and it's this one that's yellow. I wish they'd... Uh, be consistent in their color codes, but and the other one is supposed to be the dash illumination, but they didn't give me the give me the other plug. So I'll follow up with them. So battery constant, change it, jab myself with them. Now I have all the wires done. Let's at least see if the, I can stuff all the wires in here and get the radio in its in sort of in position. And I think these plastic brackets may have to come off. But I got the parking brake set, I'm gonna get it out. Of, take it out of gear for a minute. Yeah, it looks like it will go in, except for these brackets. I guess I could go to accessory. Okay, I've got a clock. So it's got power to the clock, powers up, and has AM and FM. It won't make any sounds because because the amp isn't. Uh, I don't have the fuses connected under hood yet, and I'm going to figure out how to hook up the amp and see if I can make her make her go. Well, let's see what we can get. Got everything hooked up. Let's see if it makes some sound. It sounds like the amp came up. I can hear hissing in the speakers. Unfortunately, at this point, I cut the soundtrack back uh, because I did uh, get some nice music on the radio and it sounded really nice in the car. I tried uh, a couple of radio stations. I tried a CD, but uh, under the copyright rules, uh, I'm really not supposed to transmit or add any of that to my video without a license. And so uh, right now, I don't want to go track down all the licenses, but... Uh, I'll just tell you I had a successful test. I don't know if my auxiliary input's working yet or not. Let's try plugging this guy in and see see if it drives anything. Well, I'm not getting that to work yet. But AM and FM's working good. Um, in fact, they're working too good. Um, I'm going to have to go back to the amp and uh, cut the sensitivity back. There are knobs on it. Uh, they're hard to get to because of where it's mounted, but right now all it takes is one knot on the volume control to be almost too loud, so I can cut that back some. 
hey now if I can find a way to get this mounted in there um, I'll have uh, sound when I'm driving well I have the radio in, um, tucked in the dash here everything seems to be well except the um, except the auxiliary input and I've rung the wires out with a meter and I don't see anything wrong with it so hey I've got AM FM and the plays CDs it's really kind of nice it just it just nestles in there um, I managed to get the plastic brackets off and if I uh, make a couple of make a couple of spots here I could probably tie it down if I had to but for now it's actually in pretty good shape and uh, can probably ride right there until until I get my um, new replacement console done so project finished at least for now